Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Vault Warden. So Vault Warden is an open source alternative to the Bitwarden password manager. The API is also compatible to Bitwarden, so you'll be able to use the Bitwarden desktop app, the browser extension, and even the mobile applications. Vault Warden is perfect for managing your, your passwords securely. And with Docker's Compose, setting it up will be relatively simple. I'll also show you how to set up Vault Warden as a SSH agent to securely encrypt and store your SSH keys. So this can be great for authenticating to your servers or even signing Git commits. All right, so starting off with the compose.yaml file, there's a couple of things to note. So you can only access Vault Warden with a valid certificate, uh, SSL certificate, and a reverse proxy to handle HTTPS. So I'm using Caddy reverse proxy, and I'll briefly show you how I have that configured within my Caddy file. I also have a video on a complete Caddy setup, so watch that if you're, you're having issues. Looking at the network mode and the ports, I have those commented out since I'm using Caddy reverse proxy. I am also putting it on the Caddy network, the same as my reverse proxy. For the environment variables, the domain is, you'll need to specify the URL that you will be accessing Vault Warden from. For me, I have it set up as vault.test.geniehome.net. Uh, looking at the admin token, the admin token is for assessing the admin dashboard. And I'll show you how to create the token. This step is optional. You don't have to set up the admin dashboard if you have no need for it. Then you have the experimental client features flag. So this is for enabling the SSH, the SSH agent feature, which I'll be covering later on in the video. So this is my caddy file configuration for Vault Warden. I have the reverse proxy pointing to the container name Vault Warden. It's using port 80, so I do not need to specify which port. So I'm also using CrowdSec as well. Uh, you can look at my CrowdSec video on how to implement that in your setup. One thing to note, I already updated my DNS record as well to point to vault.test.geniehome.net. So before we start the container, I want to create the admin token for the .env file so that we can access the, the admin dashboard. Again, this is optional. Uh, the admin token is an argon2 hash, which is a secure password hashing algorithm designed to protect against brute force attacks and ensure strong cryptographic security. So first, you want to make sure that you have argon2 installed. For Debian systems, you can just run the command sudo app update and uh, sudo app install argon2. I already have it installed. So next, you want to run this echo command right here. And this is just going to create a password hash for the password that you enter in right here. For me, it's just going to be password123. And then it's going to place that inside a .env file. So I run that. And if I do a cat.env, the token's right there. Remember the password that you chose as we will be using it later on in the video to authenticate to the admin dashboard. Now we can start the container by running a sudo docker compose up dash d. So now we can access the URL. Once loaded, we can click create account and fill out the required information. So for me, I'm just going to put test at test.com for my name, a password. Once you have everything filled out, you just want to click create account. And then continue to log in. This here is the main page. Just to highlight a few things, so you have the Vault tab. This is where you can create new items such as logins, 
passwords, card information, identities such as driver license or passports, as well as secure note or SSH keys, which I'll be going over later. You can also create new organizations to share parts of your vault with other users. So in my personal Vault Warden instance, I have a family organization set up that I can share with my family so that they only have passwords to the streaming apps that we use. Under tools, this is where you can generate a password. You can also import passwords as well as export data. So you can explore the other tabs, but I'm going to shift over to setting up the desktop app, which should be the same setup for your browser extension or your mobile app as well. So for the desktop app, you want to go to the official Bitwarden website to install the client on your device. For me, I'm using Windows and I already have it downloaded and installed. Once you open the app, enter in the email that you use to configure your user. Then under assessing, you want to change this from bitwarden.com to self-host it, and then you want to enter in the URL of your Vault Warden instance. Then you want to click Save, Continue, and then Log In as you normally would. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, I have a couple of passwords already configured. It's the same setup for the browser extension and mobile app as well. Just make sure that you change the accessing from bitwarden.com to self-hosted. So now we can test it out to see how it works. So I do already have the Bitwarden client installed on my Firefox instance. I'm going to go to Photo Prism. I first need to authenticate with Authentic. And I do have a video on how to set up Authentic as well if you're interested in that. So for here, I'll just select the Authentic password that I've already configured. And then as you can see, the password is pre-populated. And I'll click Continue. And then also, I do have a TOTP configured for Authentic, and that pre-populates. So I'll click Continue. And now I can access Photo Prism. And then it's the same thing for Photo Prism. I'll just select the login that I've created and the, ad, and the username and password is pre-filled out. And that's pretty much it. The next thing that we're going to do is configure Vault Warden to act as an SSH agent to securely encrypt and store your SSH keys. Like I said before, this can be good for authenticating to your home servers without the need for entering in passwords. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate the SSH key and we're going to be using the web app to do that, but you can also use the desktop app as well as the mobile app. So under all items, you're going to go to SSH key and then you're gonna click on new item and then you're just gonna give it a name. Once you give it a name, you're just gonna click save. And then if we look down at the desktop app, we should see the test key was also created as well. So before we can use the key, we need to set up a, some more few things first. Uh, depending on what OS you're using, this setup will be slightly different. I am just going over the Windows desktop setup I'll link in the description the setup for Mac and Linux environment as well. For Windows, if you go to your search and you search for services, the uh, window should pop up. So you want to scroll down until you see Open SSH Authentication Agent. You want to double click on Open SSH Authentication Agent, and then you want to set the startup type to disabled. You're going to click Apply and OK. And this disables the open SSH service that Windows uses by default. Now we're going to go to our terminal. We're going to open up a PowerShell. And we're going to test to see if Bitwarden agent is working as expected. So we're going to use the command SSH, tack add, tack L. And as we can see, we see the test key, and this is the public key right here. So it looks like everything is working as expected. 
So the next thing that we want to do is add the public key to the server that you want to use the SSH key with. So in this video, I won't be going over how SSH keys work. Just know that you'll need to add the public key, not the private key to the server you want to use the key with. So first, you'll want to copy the key, the public key. And now if you go log into our server, you should be in the home directory that the user that you logged into. So typing, running the command ls tack la shows the list of all files and directories. You should have a .ssh directory, but if you don't, just create the directory by running a make their .ssh. So you'll cd inside the .ssh directory and you can use whatever text editor that you want to create or edit the authorized keys file. So I'm going to use nano authorized keys. And then I'm going to paste in that public key. And then I'm going to save and exit. Now, if you're running nano, it's just going to be a control X, Y, enter. So now we can test to see if this key works by logging out. And then we're going to try to log back in and we should get a prompt from the Bitwarden desktop app asking us to authorize access to the server. So let's see if it works. SSH Ubuntu. I see the pop-up right here. I'm requesting access to the test key. I'm going to click authorize. And then I immediately I have access to my server. So real quick, I also wanted to talk about the admin dashboard. If you configured it earlier, you can go to the slash admin to access the admin dashboard. So now you want to enter in the password that you configured earlier with the admin token. So inside the admin dashboard, you can overwrite environmental variables that was initially included within your Docker Compose file, as well as do some admin functions, such as disabling or deleting users, managing your organizations. So one thing that I would change, especially if you plan to make vault watering publicly accessible, I would disable new signups. And you can do that right here. And there you have it, a complete walkthrough to set up your very own password manager service with Vault Watering. So play around with it some more. There's a lot more that you can do with it as well, such as creating web authn keys and authenticating with Git repositories and even SSH agent forwarding. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more tech tips tutorials. If you have any questions or you want to share your setup experience, please drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Until next time.